or however you're doing. Just real quick here, why do we study history? This is just a quick introduction. Why do we study history? Many people think it's just all boring names and dates. But let me answer, let me answer the question in a, in, a, in a very brief thing. You don't think. You don't think. That is the view of many psychologists out there. They're wrong, but they're half right. We don't think on our own. Our method of thinking, our processes in our brain, the ideas that come out of it come through a filter, come through something called a social learning context. For those who are interested, look it up. Michelle and Shoda um, have, a, have a great, very technical piece on this. But your brain has a filter. Okay, it filters emotions, it filters events that have happened, that, that have happened through that context. Okay, uh, someone who has suffered trauma in childhood, um, abuse, etc. Well, 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 an event will occur and they will react in a different way based on their past experiences because their brain filters that information differently. I, the best example of this, and it's, and it's an, an extreme example, is PTSD. The soldiers coming back from war, they will hear a loud noise and their brain will tell them this is a bomb about to go off and they will react in such a way. Their brain processes that information gives tells them something based on the information they have previously learned and and, and that that filter okay that is called a, it's called a social learning context everything you read today everything you're taught in history class everything you're taught in psychology class everything you're taught in bible class all comes through the filter of the past knowledge you understand and so you perceive that knowledge that information differently based on your past learning another term for that is a christian worldview it is our goal at God's Bible School and College to pre give people a Christian worldview, to help people to see the world through the context, through the context of a, a Christian worldview, a Christian learning, social learning context. Okay, a, a, see it as God, as the best we understand as God would want us to see it. See it through a biblical view or a biblical lens, and it is for this reason that we we, we teach history class. To develop you to have a social learning context or a Christian worldview about the world and about events that occur, about the events that have happened in the past, and how to process new information and learn new information. It is not just about knowing the boring names and dates. A tired but true cliche is those who don't learn the mistakes of the past are bound to repeat them. That is, it is a tired cliche, but it is true. But history, his story, as in Christ, his story, history, B.C., A.D., before Christ, out of Domino, in the year of our Lord. History is, an attempt, is, is a, a way of developing a, a broad understanding of the world and, and, and a broad knowledge and context for which you, one can understand the events that have happened. If one wants to understand theology, they need to understand what was the context in which that theology was developed. If one wants to understand doctrine, what was the context? in which that doctrine was developed. And if one wants to understand history, one has to understand what the context of that theology, that doctrine caused, and what the reactions that it, what it did, that theology and doctrine, what, what events did that drive in history. It's all interrelated. You cannot separate history, theology, and ideas. The, the, the history of ideas is history. Without ideas, there is no, without the idea of Marxism, there is no, there is no communist. Okay, so without the idea of Marxism, there is no Socialist Party of America. Okay, without the idea, without the ideas of John Calvin. Okay, there is no, there is no, um, there is no Puritans. Without the Puritans, there is no antinomianism. And without antinomianism, there is no massive collapse of American of the American Church and of millions of people losing their faith because of losing their salvation because of this. So understanding history, the context in which ideas come about, and what those ideas then cost is history. And that is all to help you to learn to filter and see the world through a Christian worldview or a Christian social learning context. That is the point of history. One of the points of history. We'll talk more about other stuff. But I just want some of you wonder, why Why do we study history? And that 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 is why. 
In order to become educated and knowledgeable about the world around you, you must be knowledgeable and educated about the events that have happened in the past. From, and if you want to be a Christian, you need to be knowledgeable and educated about that from a Christian perspective. It's very difficult to be a Christian and not have a Christian perspective. In fact, it is not near impossible. I won't, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure how one can see the world through non-Christian eyes when they are a Christian. That, that is something that God very rapidly begins to develop within a person. But it's still easy to have parts of your, of your, of your ideology and your understanding of the world come from non-Christian places. Often it may be right, but often it is wrong. And understanding the world through God's eyes is well one of the things we're trying to do here at God's Bible School and College. And that is one of the things we're trying to do in history class here at American History, is to help you to understand the history of our world, to understand our world today, and the events that have happened in, in our world through God's eyes. Thank you. Have a great day.